20 bucks says you can't do that. Siri, I can't believe you're here by yourself, all alone on Christmas Eve like some forlorn bachelor. We'll have whatever our little artist is having. Oh, make that tea, Martha. You know, Siri, I believe you would have been better off if you had married Jason. You could have been his wife by now. Have your own home. Do you remember how happy you were last Christmas? How you sang praises of domestic life? I urged you straight off to forgive him. Remember? for my better half. <laughs> Robert has to be the only man in America to actually wear bedroom slippers. I blame you for that. Tiny feet he has. You never actually saw him in the slippers you got him last Christmas, did you? Well, let me show you. The walk of a big man when he's angry. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Patience, nervousness. Oh, it's cold. Oh, I should be ashamed. Robert really is such a nice little husband. <laughs> so why don't you come over tonight? Hmm? Robert would love to see you. Just to show there's no hard feelings against me. I know that you think I stood in your way, but I'm entirely blameless. You should have a husband. <laughs> like. <laughs> and Nicole tried to seduce him. <laughs> Can you imagine, Robert? He told me himself. And Nicole isn't the first one to try. I don't know what it is. I don't understand it. I mean, but uh, for some reason, certain women just seem to go crazy around my husband. I mean, maybe it's because he's on the board of the Arts Commission, or I don't know. No, I wouldn't be surprised if you. I never did trust you. Too much. Trust me. Too much. You know, the first time I ever saw you, you scared me. I was so frightened I couldn't take my eyes off of you. And then everywhere I went, there you were. It was like someone had faxed you a copy of my social calendar. I didn't dare be your enemy. So I became your friend. But then whenever you were over to the house, there was always this friction between you and Bob. It's like he hated the sight of you. I did everything I could to try and make him show you some small bit of courtesy. It wasn't until you announced your engagement. Then suddenly, boom, boom, boom. Violent friendship blossoms between you two, as if only then you dare show your true feelings passions, only when it was safe. <laughs> Strange. I never felt jealousy. You remember the christening? Oh, yeah, of course you do. You're the godmother. When I told Robert to kiss you. Very innocent. And then when he did. Why did you break off your engagement? Why did you never come to our home again after that? Why won't you come to our home tonight? Don't. I understand completely. It was because of this and that and this and that. All accounts are balanced. So innocent, it seemed. I wear your colors. 
I read your authors. I eat your favorite foods. I drink your drinks. <laughs> Even my passion comes from you. You have crept into my soul. Like a worm into an apple. I suppose you know that people call this your little rat hole. Why don't you just put all this in storage? Or is there some prestige in having your gallery closed because you were denied funding by the commission? As for my husband, that didn't harm me. In fact, Robert and I are all the more intimate because of it. That's what you lost. That's what I gained. You didn't receive anything from me, but you, you gave me something. You know, in spite of everything, Siri, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I do. You're like a wounded animal. Did you honestly think that I would leave Robert the way that you left your fiance? All your passions. Inadequate and incapable of keeping a man's love. I was able to keep it. All your authors, they can't teach you the art of living. I have learned it. And there you stand, forever silent. <laughs> Used to think that was a sign of strength, but it isn't, is it? You just have nothing to say. Thank you for everything that you taught me. Thank you for teaching my husband how to love. And now I'm going home to love him. Thank you.